Anthony Hartwig here with another basketball season preview and coach's corner. We are joined in Columbiana by the head coach of the boys program over there, Todd Johnson. Coach, thank you so much for hopping on and talking to us about this program. I appreciate you having me on, Anthony. So before we get all into all the exciting stuff this year, let's have a little recap of last year, maybe some lessons that you hope the returning guys learned on, on the experiences they had last year. So pretty successful uh, season for us in Columbia, actually, last year. We ended up uh, sharing the EOAC title with uh, with Lisbon. Um, I believe we won 19 games, you know, ha had a great year, had a great group of seniors uh, that, uh, you know, played a lot of basketball for us uh, for four years. So, um, you know, they're definitely going to be missed. But this year's group is excited to, uh, to, to kind of write their own story. So, um, you know, uh, I guess you, you say something to learn from. I hope one thing they, they took away from uh, that group is just the, uh, the the dedication and hard work day by day that uh, those young men put in to ultimately have the success that they did. When you lose the senior class, you do. I, I know the first questions that you probably try to answer in the offseason is who's going to be the leaders? Who's, who are they going to be the guys that step up and, and, you know, become leaders on the court? You know, we'll, we'll go over your whole roster, but who are some guys that you saw early on in preseason in the summer and now – as, as official practices start, really step into leadership roles and and try to fill the, the shadows of those seniors that graduated last year. Cester uh, uh, Herrick is our returning uh, returning starter from last year, our loan returning starter from last year, and he's someone that uh, we had talks in the off season after the season uh, and as well during the summer and um, as we've started uh, as we went through open gyms and now practices, he's really became vocal. Uh, he's, he's someone that the boys do rally around. They do look towards for his uh, leadership, uh, but he's always, you know, uh, keeping the energy up in practice, high-fiving, uh, you know, keep keeping the guys going. And um, our other seniors as well have really started to come around. Uh, Luca Caglicio and Reese Rouse uh, have uh, really started to come around and become a little bit more uh, vocal as well. Now let's, let's get to know the whole team. Let's have the roster break down, you know, the faces that we're going to be seeing a lot on the floor in Columbia? Well, like I just alluded to, you know, so we'll have our three seniors this year, uh, Seth, um, Luca, and Reese. Uh, and then, um, you know, after that, you know, we're going to be we're gonna be breaking a lot a lot of guys in for first-time varsity basketball. Um, looking at uh, Hunter Devanzo Jr., Braden Clancy Jr., Cooper Brown is uh, is someone as well that we're, we're really looking towards to uh, to step up and have a, have a great year for us. Um Freshman Senator Johnson has had uh, some really great practices, and he's continuing to uh, to improve. And then also, we're looking at sophomores Carter Johnson and Avery Young to uh, to help round out the uh, the varsity rotation this year. Coach, we already talked about your leaders, and and you have great ones. But I also want to talk about um, you know guys that you have uh, a little ex high expectations for, or, or kids that maybe. Um, that you talked about that, that maybe Columbiana fans didn't see a lot of last year that you think are going to be, you know, really big names. And you're already seeing like reasons why they're going to be able to have, you know, no problems transitioning into this, in this stage of their career. So Co Cooper is the uh, first one that comes to mind when you speak about something like that, Anthony Cooper is someone who has, uh, you know, a, 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 an unbelievable ceiling. The kid, the, the kid really, you know, he's, you know, he's someone that I think, you know, as he continues to progress, as he continues to um, get the reps at the varsity level, he's someone that's really going to improve. And then uh, Braden Clancy and Hunter Devanzo, they 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 really they work their tails off. Uh, they're going to give you everything they can and more night in and night out. And then, um, you know, I, I've really seen improvement out of our, you know, other two seniors, like I spoke about with Reese and uh, Luca. They're really, they're really you know, coming along and carving out a role and a rotation uh, within our varsity, within our varsity team. And then, um, you know, like I kind of alluded to a little bit, freshman Senator Johnson, I'm, uh, you know, expectations are, are, are high for him as well to continue uh, to, to come in and uh, contribute at the varsity level. Let's venture into your schedule. We'll start with the conference inside the EOAC. Like you said last year, you shared it. You know how competitive this league really is. Uh, let's talk about what you see it, what you see out of it this year, and some of the expectations across the EOAC. Well, the EOAC, I mean, it's always a, it's always a tough conference. You have established coaches; they do a great job within their programs, and night in, night out, it's always going to be a battle. Uh, you have some teams, you know, like like us, like Columbiana, that uh, did graduate a lot, 
So you have some some teams that are going to be kind of in the same boat we are with with breaking in some new boys and and getting their varsity minutes in rotation. And then you have some other some other teams that do return a lot. So you know they're kind of maybe earmarking this year, looking at this year as as, as uh, you know for one of them to maybe jump up a little bit. But I do think that the league night in night out it's going to be a tough contest. There's going to be a lot of parity, I think, uh, when it when it's all said and done. And there there could be you know you know, a couple lost team that ends up winning this whole thing. So I, I do think it's going to be a, a battle all the way through until the end. There's always a lot on the line in league play. And then when you venture outside of the EOAC, it's all about trying to get yourselves better for postseason any way you can talk about some of the teams that pop up non-conference that you're excited to, to test yourself with. Well, we open up with, you know, at Jackson Milton, they got a new coach up there. So it's going to be exciting. You know, they, they got a lot of great energy coming out of that program. You look at a Lakeview. We have Lakeview on the schedule this year. They're coming to us. We go, we go to South Range. That's that. That that's going to be a tough one. We got um, Springfield coming in. They're always great. Coach Brink does a great job. You know that's that, that that's that's going to be a tough one for us as well. We end the season uh, at Matthews, and then also we're actually going down to Toronto this year. We're uh, playing in their uh, Holiday Invitational. We're playing against Brook, West Virginia. So that'll be uh, someone we've we've never played before. At least. Uh, as I've been the head coach at Columbiana. So, so that'll be exciting to, to be involved in that as well. Coach, usually with the season previews, we don't talk about tournament time. It's way too early, but well, there's an expansion in basketball now. There's more divisions and there's more um, comparable teams with all these divisions when you talk about school size. What are your initial thoughts on, on maybe some doors that, that the expansion of divisions can open for Columbiana in the postseason? Well, I mean, so so you're taking it from four divisions to seven, and football has been at seven divisions now for years. So I, I like the move for smaller schools because I do think it'll bring some more some more you know parity, I guess, to the tournament and uh, some more opportunity for some smaller schools that, uh, especially if they're having special years, to maybe make a little bit more of a run. So I do like it in that respect, but I you know I can't give the full uh, I guess my my full answer until we play it through and we see how it works out. But um, on paper, uh, you know, I, I do like going to the seven divisions and I do think it's going to um, really even out the tournament, maybe a little bit more, especially for the small schools like us. And now let's talk about your staff. We, we never let these interviews go without giving the coach the, the chance to highlight the people that are with them that are working to build this program to, to what they want it to be. And we know you have a lot of people behind you from middle school on up that um, help Columbia and be what it is. So talk about your staff, the people working with you and the people that wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't the Columbiana wouldn't be without. So, you know, we bring, uh, you know, we bring back Eric Hoffins. He's is going to be our JV coach this year. And, and I date myself, but uh, he played for me. So he played for me, uh, you know, at Columbiana, our freshman coach, we're going to be bringing on. His name is Andrew Good. And again, I'm really dating myself because when I was coaching Columbiana way back, when he was in seventh grade, he was one of the first teams that I coached. And then our eighth and seventh grade coaches are, again, Coach uh, Quentin Cross and Coach Ryan Foss, two boys that, uh, you know, played in our program as well. And what I really enjoy, what I really like is that we have, uh, you know, coaches uh, throughout our program that have been through our program. So they know how to teach it. They know the expectations. They know the language. And it's kind of a seamless transition as they continue to move up the ladder until they get the varsity basketball. All that's great too, but but what kind of a blessing is it as a coach to know that you have players that have played for you that enjoyed the experience so much that they want to come back and pour back into the program? It's great. It really is. You know, it, it speaks to their love of the game. It really it speaks to their love of, of wanting to continue to um, build our program. So I I really enjoy it. it it's uh, you know it's great that that players uh, ultimately want to come back and help me coach, but also in the same breath I. Have former players all you know uh, alma mater that stopping at practices, coming at games uh, to to you know check in on the program and see how it's going. So I really do enjoy you know having having alma mater, having having uh, boys from our from their alma mater, I should say, come back and uh, and coach at Columbia. We know this Clippers community doesn't need any help getting hyped up for the season, coach. When's the first game? When's the first time they can get down to Columbia and and check you guys out? So, like I said, our first game is actually going to be on the road. We're going to be at Jackson Milton. But then our first home game, we open up on Friday, December 6th uh, against the Urban Scholars. And then we come right back and we have two more home games after that with Lakeview and Latonia. So, we go on the road first, uh, the third at Jackson Milton. 
And then our next three after that are at home in Columbiana. So come on out and, and uh, support the boys. Good old home cooking for Columbiana to open up the month of December. Coach, we love it. We can't wait to see you guys out there. We wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much for coming on, talking to us about your team. We can't wait to see you guys. And once again, we'll talk to you in real soon. I appreciate it, Anthony. Thank you.